are you are you either of you Catholic or I'm not. You're not? Okay. <laughs> we grew up, I used we, to be. We grew up Catholic. And yeah, we, we are both. no longer Catholic. Yeah. Oh, we <laughs> both grew up very Catholic. I have a, I have a lot of gay friends and it <laughs> hurts my soul. It really does. It hurts my soul to know that those people are not going to be given the rights that the rest of us have there. My choices center on on living out a life that embodies Christian values and embodies Catholic values in a way that represents my love and compassion for other people. And to me, there are a lot of Christians and a lot of Catholics in the world who don't embody that in their life every day. They, they say one thing, they do another. It's that kind of hypocrisy that drives a lot of people away from, from the Christian faith and, and Catholicism more specifically. I became a religious studies major in college and I had an early Christianity class which um, allowed me to study Christianity from a historical academic perspective. And when I, when I was informed of the, the way that the Nicene Creed was created um, during the reign of Constantine, Emperor Constantine, and the fact that he was not a Christian, he was not um, educated at all in what Christian thought was about, and he basically made the preemptive decision about what wording was chosen as a translation from the original Latin words. Um, and that has founded a lot of people's diehard beliefs today. And I think that if they knew where that stemmed from, where that came from, from some pagan emperor, I think they would probably question the same thing. And so for me, that day in college, when I um, studied history, I went to my professor's office um, afterwards in tears. I, my faith was destroyed instantaneously because everything that I felt like it had been founded on was now faulty. And so I talked to her um, one on one and she was just like, you know, there's a lot of things I'd like to be able to share with you, but because we're in a public institution, I can't. And I understood that, so I had a, an interesting conversation with her that um, I believe was very restorative for me and allowed me to appreciate the Christian history for what it is and to appreciate what's come out of it, but to also acknowledge uh, the negative things that have come out of it, of it as well. To, to just be aware that there are dark sides to just about every movement. Um, and so for me, it was, a, it was a matter of, well, do I call myself this anymore? Do I call myself a Christian? Do I call myself a Catholic? And for me, it was not about a label. It wasn't important anymore. What was important was my actions and the way I treated other people and living out a life of love and compassion. Jesus lived a life of compassion and Jesus spent time with the outcasts and Jesus spent time with the lepers. And if you really want to embody Christian values, you live a life of Christ. A lot of the Bible is not Jesus' words. I hate to break the bubble for people. Okay, it was written by men. It was written after Jesus was born. Oh, do you after Jesus here? died. It was written 50 to 80 years later by people who never even knew Jesus. So if you really want to be Christian, founded in the life of Christ, then live the life that Christ lived.